Hey guys, how you doing? It's KJ here from the scariest movie ever, and I got a video here I've been uh, kind of putting together for a while. I wanted to share it with you. I think it's important because it goes to show you uh, just another reason why you can't really trust a lot of these Hollywood movies or entertainment in general uh, to be any kind of a moral compass for you, okay? Most of you already know this, but what we're going to look into is the uh, so-called gay mafia in Hollywood. I've mentioned in some of my videos before that I, I lived out in L.A. And for about seven years, and I worked in Hollywood and TV production for around three years, maybe just a little over. And I did the whole thing. I mean, I'm not some big Hollywood hotshot, far from it, but I had a, an agent for my writing and did a lot of meetings and worked a lot of different TV shows and stuff like that. So, you know, I got a little bit in there and got to, you know, do things. But it's interesting when you're out there because you hear things. You know, you get to know people that have been out there for years and, uh, on all different levels, and they just tell you stories about celebrities. You find out all these things. And when I was out there, that's when I learned the term beard, B-E-A-R-D, <laughs> beard. Beard's a very uh, common term out there for uh, for like a set-up marriage, okay? And you get a lot of these. So like, you know, John Travolta, I'm going to cover some John Travolta stuff here in a second. But, you know, for instance, like him, people would call his wife a beard, I can't remember her name. Oh, yeah, Kelly Preston. They would call Kelly Preston a beard because she's a disguise for John Travolta's homosexuality. And like I said, I didn't make this term up. It's it's very common out there, and you hear it all the time. And, and uh, you hear a lot of interesting stories, uh, which I'll cover a little bit of that as well. But I heard a lot of John Travolta stuff. Um, I knew a couple of security guards on Big Brother, and I was working on the show. And both these guys had stories about Travolta hitting on him at different times throughout the years, like on movies and stuff like this. So we have that, and uh, you know, then of course we got the beard thing, and people were associating that a lot with uh, a lot of the couples you hear about now. So I'm going to show you a few things on that as well. Anyway, what sparked this whole thing for me was Brian Singer. He's the director of X Men and. Uh, the Superman movie Reborn, I guess it was called, the one before this last one. He'd done a lot of stuff. He did a cool movie called Usual Suspects. It was his first movie. It was really good. But anyway, he's he's a gay man, and uh, which is fine. You know, it's whatever. But, you know, recently these stories came out where he's, uh, he's facing a lot of uh, lawsuits, actually two. Uh, one from a teenage boy in England, and then there's another one that came up. It's been going, over, uh, going on for like the last several years. But there's a guy that's coming out now, and he's saying that when he was like 15 years old, that Brian Singer and some of his Hollywood buddies were just kind of tossing him around and uh, using him and uh, doing some weird stuff with him. So you can look all this stuff up yourself. I won't get into all the dirty details, but it's pretty gross, um, at least I think, especially the fact that, that it was a kid, you know, it was a, a little boy, and uh, they were doing this stuff with him. Now, the reason that kind of connected with me was because when I worked out there, I heard some stories about Brian Singer. And uh, this is like years ago, like seven or eight years ago when I was out there. But I was hearing stories about Brian Singer, the director. And the story was that he was really well known out there for picking up these young, young gay men in Hollywood, taking them back to his mansion, uh, doing whatever they do. And then he would actually keep these guys clothes and kick them out of the mansion and like have them just kind of out there running around uh, with hardly anything on and <clears throat> the way that works is that Beverly Hills is right there connected to Hollywood so that's the way I was always told that uh, yeah, I guess his mansion was somewhere in that area he'd kick these guys out with hardly anything and then they would be running around the streets of Sunset or Hollywood half naked having to get rides home or whatever so you know, that gay community is real big out there in Hollywood. And, of course, working out there, you make friends with a lot of gay people. So you hear these stories. And it was fairly common, apparently, because multiple people had heard about this and talked about it and knew a guy that did it and knew a guy that knew a guy and all this other stuff. So I thought that was interesting. So so here we go, then. The whole idea is with this gay mafia in Hollywood. What is this gay mafia? Well, it's very real. Like I said, I worked out there, and most of the people up top are uh, are gay, uh, from what I learned. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of that. So, we got the Brian Singer thing. Uh, there's another. Uh, there's another one. I'll just go ahead and jump with John Travolta right now. But uh, this was a pretty big one right here. Before I show you that, I'll just show you a couple pictures here, John Travolta. But 
Uh, you might be able to make that out, but uh, that's a real famous picture. I'm surprised people don't uh, don't talk about this more, but it's been out there for a long time. It's a picture of, uh, you know, John Travolta is uh, an airline pilot, by the way, or he can fly. Uh, so he flies like private planes, but here's him and uh, one of his buddies kissing as they're boarding one of the planes that John's going to be flying. So, so we got that, and that's been out there for a long time. Like I said, not photoshopped, not fake. That's real. All right. And then there's older stories if you do a little digging on John Travolta too. Here's one right here with him cross-dressing. But you go back 25, even 30 years, and you start finding stuff like this, uh, where he's got him and this older buddy of his and uh, spending a lot of time together. So apparently this was one of his lovers, they're saying, from, from way back. So yeah, there's John Travolta. Um, I know, and he's, you know, again, Kelly is his beard, and there's a lot of that out there. Justin Timberlake, a lot of people would say uh, that I've heard throughout the years that he's gay as well, and I guess Jessica Biel might be his beard, and I cover that in a second as well. So here's John Travolta. This came out a couple of years ago, uh, again, kind of shuffled under the uh, under the rug pretty quick, but it was interesting because John Travolta got in some trouble with a masseuse, and uh, the masseuse claims in his lawsuit that on uh, January 16th, a couple of years ago, that Travolta groped him during a massage session at the Beverly Hills Hotel and asked for sexual favors, which the masseuse refused. And the suit claims that after the masseuse turned down Travolta, the actor told the masseuse how selfish he was and that the defendant got where he is now due to the sexual favors he had performed when he was in his Welcome Back Cotter days. This is John Travolta saying that he's where he is now for all the sexual favors he did during Welcome Back Cotter. And he made a slew of other inappropriate comments before eventually agreeing to drive the masseuse back to where he was originally picked up. Another thing right here is, uh, says that the masseuse, who has thus far remained anonymous, charged Travolta with making unwanted advances while he was giving Travolta a massage. And alleges, here's the important part, that Travolta said the Hollywood, that Hollywood is controlled by, quote, homos homosexual Jewish men who expect favors in return for sexual activity. Um... It's the casting couch, you know, but it's not like what you would expect, you know. It sounds like it's more of kind of a gay casting couch in a lot of ways. And uh, we've heard this. This stuff goes back to all the secret societies, the Illuminati stuff as well. The homosexuality is a big part of a lot of this. Um, different reasons why. Um, and I won't even go into all that stuff right now. There's, there's uh, in fact, some of it's kind of gross. But we'll get into all that another time. The point is that, uh, that it's definitely in there. I mean, even look at Skull and Bones. Um, that's where Bush and Kerry came from, the American Illuminati, where they kind of pick our, our politicians and uh, presidents and whatnot, at least one of the spots. But even there, uh, these guys get naked, they lay in a coffin with it open, they masturbate, and they, they tell all the people in the room like all the dirtiest things they've ever done. So the gay thing keeps coming back with these secret societies. I think a, a big part of it, too, is that they can compromise each other. You know, like if they have pictures of each other doing this or video, and these people want to keep it on the low, then they're compromised forever. You see what I'm saying? Until, you know, until that stuff comes out. So anyway, I think it's just another method of control in a lot of ways. So anyway, here's John Travolta. So we did that. Let me take a look at a couple other things I thought were kind of interesting here. This one's a given. Uh, you guys have probably seen this one already with Corey Feldman, but he exposes some of that gay mafia as well. So check this out real quick. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. That's the biggest problem for children in this industry. The casting couch even applies to children. Oh, yeah. Not in the same way. It's all done under the radar. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread. Oh, yeah. I was surrounded by them. And that goes on forever and ever, or not forever and ever, but for a while. So check that out as well. He definitely reveals a lot, but he's afraid to give names, which I don't blame him because people get disappeared, you know, or suicided for things like that. So Corey Feldman, another example of this uh, gay mafia in Hollywood. And as you can see, it's more of a male-dominated gay, gay mafia, if you will. And so we got that right there as well. I wanted to show you a few more things I thought were pretty interesting. So then you look at... Um, Actually, let's jump, jump to Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is another one. Pill been saying for years that he's a beard. Um, another thing you can check out with him is check out Mimi Rogers was his first wife, and she's done some interviews where she talked about how John, how uh, sorry Tom Cruise was saying that he was asexual uh, was be, was because he was thinking about becoming a monk and all this other stuff, kind of talking his way out of sex with this lady. I don't know if you've seen her, but she's a knockout, especially back in the day. 
But that was his first marriage, and she even talks openly about how he had issues with sex and uh, would always say that he was, again, kind of asexual and and whatnot. Um, But this is many, many years ago. It's like back in the 80s. So it's probably in the very beginning of of, uh, his whole thing, you know, coming to terms with who he was. Which, again, this isn't... I'm not coming after people just because they're gay. I mean, the whole point of showing you this is that... You know, this, these are the people at the very top of the entertainment industry. You know, movies, TV shows, all this stuff's coming out of there. And this is a good reason why you're not finding a lot of movies and TV shows coming out that, that are showing, you know, strong family values and things like this, okay? Because they don't, this isn't what they're about. They don't want strong family values or straight family values. You're not going to see that. That's why most of the movies you see coming out about straight couples, it's usually someone's cheating on the other one, or they kill each other, or you find these movies about families. The families are always dysfunctional. Any straight family out there movie, it seems like the family's always dysfunctional, right? Well, that's a reason. That's a purpose. And I think a lot of it comes from this. Now, here's something really interesting, too, kind of off the on the subject, but uh, just kind of taking a little sidestep. Check this out. The number 33 is a very important number with the Illuminati. It's also the uh, 33rd degree uh, Freemason, the highest level, so they say. I'm sure there's other levels that that go on, and there's a whole thing on that you can look into as well. But 33 is is the one we know of. It's like the top. So 33 is a very powerful number, very, very important also with the Masons and Illuminati. Check this out. Tom Cruise's Mystery 33 Curse. Hey guys, I'm Stephanie Bauer for Holly Scoop. It's not really a surprise that Kenny Holmes left Tom Cruise, and he's been down this road before, so it's starting to look like a curse. Tom Cruise's love life is turning into a string of eerie coincidences. There's one thing that his ex-ladies Nicole Kidman, Mimi Rogers, and now Katie Holmes all have in common, the number 33. That's the age when they all got divorced from Tom. One theory points out that among several religions, the number 33 is often associated with spiritual enlightenment. These women saw the light and got out of a relationship with Tom. Anyway, that's kind of the basic, but I think that's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, and again, no coincidences, right? And we know that these Hollywoods, uh, these Hollywood types are all Kabbalists. They're into the, the Kabbalah, Illuminati, all the uh, mystery religions and all this. And there's always numbers, and numbers mean a lot. And uh, this should be no surprise that this is what's happening. So what exactly is happening there with them, what kind of rituals they're, they're doing, I don't know. But uh, I definitely think there's something there. So it's something to look into. And thought it was very interesting so lastly guys let me just go ahead and jump right over here this one right here i thought was really interesting too it's 14 celebrity couples couples that like open relationships uh you can check this out for yourself there's a bunch of them will smith and jada pinkett you could look into some stuff with them a lot of interesting things there that jada is probably will's beard as well look into any of these relationships there's a whole thing with tom cruise and um gosh the the football player from england uh, David Beckham. There's a whole lot of things there as well you can look into. But anyway, lastly, I just want to show you this right here and give you an example because Rachel Ray is like considered, you know, one of America's sweethearts and such a sweet girl and she's on TV and everybody loves her. And like most of these people really are Satanists. And I mean, that's just one term. But I mean, on another level, again, it's the Kabbalah, it's the mystery Kabbalah, it's the mystery religions, it's the Illuminati. So all this stuff mixed in together. It's all weird and deep and unusual and. <laughs> It would take an indi- individual video for each one of these things to make, you know, to kind of explain things out. But most of you kind of get the gist. But basically, this is just common sense stuff. So look at this here. Rachel Ray and her husband, John Cusimano. So check this out. I want to read a few things here for you. And here it says, So apparently this guy, he's a spotted regularly at a, a members-only swingers club called Checkmate in Manhattan. It says down here, After a bit of socializing at the buffet and the bar, John would always make his way to the back room, and every time he was observed in the co-ed locker room, he never took a shower alone. He'd always stop by the club's buffet before closing to grab a few bagels. Da-da-da. Now here's the the interesting part. Not everyone is selected for membership. Those who wish to join the club are able or have to submit a photo and adhere to the club's clientele, excuse me, which the website describes as youngish, attractive, vibrant, hip, 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 fit, and well-dressed. But here's the most important part, sorry, it is right here. In addition to the reports of his visits to Checkmate, news media have also run an interview with a sex worker who said that Ray's husband hired her several times to spit on him and put her feet in his mouth. All right, so think about that. Open relationship, Rachel Ray, America's sweetheart, her husband's going around having prostitutes put their feet in his mouth and spit on him. 
And the whole thing in the story is they're kind of saying that Rachel Ray never does this, that this is all him and she's just kind of out of it, you know. BS. Okay, guys, look, a lot of these people are swingers. They're they're decadent. They have no morals. Okay, no morals. And they're all into this weird stuff. You don't think that Rachel Ray's and these weird swingers clubs getting turned out? I'm sorry, man. I see it. I mean, she would have to be a complete and total fool to have her husband go to these swingers clubs by himself, getting spit on, getting feet put in his mouth, and then coming home to her and everything's cool. I have no doubt she's out there doing just as much, if not worse. So, it's just a glimpse, guys, of what, what this is. It's a very decadent society uh, up there. Uh, the Hollywood elite It's very decadent. Now, like I said, they're not making movies for your kids. They don't care about you. They don't care about family values, love, or whatever. It's, it's all about uh, complete and total anarchy, nihilism, really. They may package it as a family film or whatever, but underneath, this is why we're always finding these Illuminati symbols and these really dark messages. So that's it, guys. I wanted to share that with you. Thanks for checking out the video, and I'll talk to you real soon. Take care.